Hey guys, Toby Mathis here, and today we're going to show you how to get your personal residence out of the public record where your name's not associated with it. So let me talk about what we can do and what we're not going to do. Number one, we're not trying to engage in fraud or criminal activity or, or help anybody who's engaged in any of those things. That's not why we do this. What we're doing is taking your name off of a public record associated with the property. So the property's still in the public record. It's just we're going to make sure that your personal name is not associated with it. And how do we do that? Well, first off, some people are familiar with LLCs, corporations, LPs, LLPs, the whole like, right? And they know that there's all these entities out there. That's not what we're doing. What we're going to do is change legal title only. You're still going to be the beneficiary of that property, which means that we do not put into jeopardy your capital gain exclusion on a personal residence. We do not put into jeopardy your homestead exclusion like in Texas or Florida. We do not want to cause you to lose the protections that are already on a personal residence. So for example, in Florida and Texas, you could have a $30 million judgment against you and they can't take your personal residence. In my state of Nevada, it could, it's over $500,000 that is protected. It's the equity that's protected. And so we don't want to undo those statutory benefits. We want to give you the ability to keep your name out of a public record. Now, why would we do that? Let's just think about that for a second. Why would you not want your name associated with that property in a public record? A lot of you guys may be saying, hey, I don't really care, right? The reason you don't is if you are either famous or you have people that you, that you work with that you do not want showing up on your doorstep. And I'm not talking about coworkers. Like think about a therapist or somebody who works in mental health field. Think about a lawyer, a divorce lawyer. Think about how in, in law enforcement, you can keep their names out of the public record so that people cannot go find the police officer who arrested them and go to their house. We've seen this in the news with people doxing other folks, people showing up at the Supreme Court justices' homes and things like that. If you are in a position where you're saying, hey, I would like to keep my home ownership private, maybe you've been stalked, maybe you had a horrific marriage, maybe you have somebody who just bugs the heck out of you and likes to show up on your doorstep all the time, maybe you hate your relatives, I don't know. But it's your prerogative. But what we're doing is we're getting your name off the public record, so somebody cannot just go in there and say, Toby Mathis, let's see everything he owns. Let me go to his house. And again, I could fill you in with a million. I'm like, if you're a famous person, you have fans, you have stalkers, you have just paparazzi, you may not want them showing up on your doorstep. If you're just Joe Public and you say, you know what, I value my privacy, I don't want anybody to be able to go look at my house. I, I literally had a neighbor do that to me once, comes up and starts telling me about myself because they had Googled. And I was like, oh my God, you know, it's just because I closed, it was a small house and it was underneath the homestead exclusion. I didn't think anything of it. And now I've learned my lesson, right? Is no, I don't want my name sitting all over the public record necessarily. So here's how you get rid of it. Number one, we're going to be using something called a land trust. Let me give you some history on this before you have some lawyer go, no, you can't do those in my state. Yes, you can. Every state in the United States, period. Full stop. It's the same thing as a living trust. All you say, it's, oh, it's, it's under common law. If it's not a statute. There's plenty of states that have the statutes on land trust. And even if your state doesn't, it still is allowable under common law. And all it's doing is it's a contract between three parties and those three parties, it's real simple. I always just kind of use a triangle, kind of goes like this. Every trust, you have a grantor who puts property in, pretend that's a property. You have a trustee who manages the property, is on legal title for that trust. Easiest way to think of a trust is it's like a little baby, can't own anything for itself. So everything's owned through a trustee. So the trustee is on title for the benefit, you got it of beneficiaries. So the beneficiaries in your case would just be you. So you're the beneficiary or you and your spouse are beneficiaries. But all we're doing is we're putting in a property and it's secret sauce is that trustees listed. So let's go back in time. Illinois land trust, that's what people call them. It's 
because it came out of Illinois. It was when the Sears Tower was accumulating the property under which the, the big tower was built, tallest building at the time, I believe. So they wanted to accumulate all of these properties, but they didn't want to be held for ransom, right? They didn't want to be, hey, there's three people that aren't selling because they see they're trying to buy up all this property. By the way, same thing Disney World dealt with down in Florida, and they did the exact same thing. They used trusts to go in and start accumulating the property so the names weren't the same. So it might be A.T. Mathis, trustee of the Black Trust, and then you have, you know, A.T. Mathis, trustee of the Green Trust, and you say, oh, we don't want to have too many A.T. Mathis, so somebody else signs on the White Trust, and somebody else signs on the Yellow Trust, somebody else signs on the Purple Trust, right? And they're just going through, and you could make them numerical, you can do whatever you want. What we use is an anonymous LLC. We use a LLC in Wyoming, usually a a sequentially numbered one. So it's like it's one of a thousand LLCs that are floating around there with no name attached to it. We'll use that as a trustee, and then you'll be the beneficiary. In all states but one, you don't list the beneficiary in the public record. And even in that state, there's a workaround. So what ends up happening is, I'll show you exactly how it works, is I'll have my house, and it'll be the 123 LLC trustee of the ABC trust dated, you know, blank, let's say 2022, if we put it together now. And by the way, that's exactly how you name your trust. You could go ABC trust by, you know, dated, let's just say it's uh, January 1st, 2022, uh, by its trustee, 2022WY123 LLC. Like you literally can be that completely bizarrely anonymous. Your name's nowhere on there. Nobody's name is on there, right? So from a public record standpoint, when somebody does a search and they're looking for the property and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm going to find this thing. Somebody's going to see my name. No, they don't see a name because there's no name in the actual public record. You may actually sign a document, but there's no name in a public record. It's not going to be sitting there. So all it means is from from a public record standpoint is your name's not floating around there in a searchable format. Could somebody go look at that property Go pull up a mortgage and see that your name's on a mortgage. Yes, but they would have to find the property first. Rarely can I just search and grab all the mortgages. Even if I could, most people do not have access to that type of process. Like I do asset searches. I'll pay $3,500 for an asset search that gets into that type of detail where they'll actually pull properties that somebody hits on. And I'll just tell you this, if I don't know the properties ahead of time and somebody's done this, cause I've looked at people, I've looked at my partners, I do it all myself. We do these things to see what works and what doesn't. You don't see it. You don't see it. So it, it's a county by county issue. But from a, just a generic standpoint of like, I just want to do a searching. I want to see if I can, if somebody can find you. So let's say I'm Dr. Mathis and I work with, with people that I may not want to uh, know, have know where I live. Like, let's say I have a whole bunch of patients and the type of work I do and the type of practice I have means I really don't want them showing up on my, at my home all the time. Like, like that's, that's the severity of what would come up. They will actually show up at my house. So I want to make sure that if somebody looks for me, hey, they're, they're looking at Toby Mathis. I want to make sure that the only properties that pop up are ones that I'm okay with them seeing. Maybe it's some, maybe it's an investment property or something like that. Maybe it's a second home, but if my, where I reside, kids and you know, my pets, my wife, everything, I want to make sure that they can't just show up at my house. This is how you do it. This is how you get your name off of it. And it's actually far more simple than people realize. And it works like a charm. It just is a process of saying, I want to get the name into the trustee. I want the the trustee's name out there. I'm going to use an anonymous ownership entity to do that. Now, there's a secondary way to do this 
uh, to where you don't use the anonymous LLC, but you use a third party. So for example, a lawyer, an accountant, a relative, somebody else, like I have clients where the spouses have different last names and stuff. And so they'll just put it in spouse number two, you know? So if, if, if spouse number one is, is famous or has a reason to not have their name out there, maybe they're in politics, maybe they're, they have some notoriety, maybe they, you know, even if you've been falsely accused, there's all these situations where you say, Hey, you know what? I just don't want someone to be showing up on my doorstep. And that's an easy way to do it. To be put it in somebody else's the trustee. Now here's the big, big questions is whenever we do something, we want to make sure we don't harm ourselves. So this type of structure will not impact your due on sale clause of your, of, of your mortgages, because this is a grantor trust in a home in which you are continuing to reside in. It's less than four units and it would qualify under the Garn St. Germain Act, which makes the loan excluded. They cannot call it due. So there's protections for you under there. Number two, your 121 exclusion, which is your ability to avoid capital gain uh, inclusion on $250,000 of the sale of a personal residence that you've lived in two of the last five years. Uh, that's for singles, $500,000 if you're married, filing jointly, in which case, again, lived in it two of the last five years as your primary residence. This will not impact that. You can literally go into an LLC like if you're really paranoid or if you have liabilities, you could literally put your home in an LLC and the IRS is deemed that okay for 121 exclusions. So that's not the issue. And then the last one is the homestead exclusion with your state. Grantor trusts will not take that away. You go into an LLC, you might lose your, your, your uh, homestead exclusion in a lot of states. So we don't do them like in Florida and Texas, you just wouldn't do it right? But you might do the trust in those states because you're not worried about the homestead exclusion. You're just trying to get your name off of the public record so that someone doesn't show up at midnight knocking on your door, you know, or you're being harassed or you're being stalked uh, or like, again, there's victims of domestic abuse. There's people that just don't want to be found. There's people that just value their privacy. All those cases, this is a perfect, easy way to structure it so that your name's not sitting there in a public record. And that's it. If you believe that this type of information would benefit somebody else, please share this. If you know anybody who's got that anxiety, share it. Uh, if you like this type of content, obviously click that like button. And if you click the bell, then you'll be notified. I usually put out two or three videos a week. And then if you could, let me know any topics you want me to hit down below in the comments. We love taking the suggestions from the folks that are actually consuming the information that we provide. We like sharing information and we like coming up with unique strategies to help people do things like getting their name off of their home and keeping their affairs private.